So let's go into section 14.2, which is completing the statement of cash flows. And recall that in section 1, we did operating activities on the statement of cash flow using the indirect method. And we had the net income, we adjusted for depreciation expense and added that back as a source. And then we looked at the changes of these current assets and current liabilities. And based on increasing or decreasing, they were a source, a plus, or a use, or a minus. So that was section 14.1. 14.2 then, we're going to do finishing the cash flow, which means we're going to do both investing and financing. And recall, we invest in long-term assets or plant assets, equipment, building, land, that kind of things, or investments. And then financing, we use bonds or long-term debt. We issue stock, that kind of stuff. So that's the pieces that we're going to be looking at here in this section. And then we're going to also look at some cash flow and cash flow margin ratios. So this whole slide is pretty much just on that summary sheet and what we talked about. So again, an increase in an asset is a use, a decrease in an asset is a source. And so preparing the investing activity section of the statement of cash flow. So we have a, an abbreviated part of the comparative balance sheet here showing the increases and decreases. And then we have the statement of cash flow, just the investing activities portion here. So we're looking at all these changes of long-term plant assets. And keep in mind, as I stated in the last one, the accumulated depreciation, this change of 9284, is the debit to depreciation expense, credit to accumulated depreciation that we talked about. And that amount is already in the operating section as an adjustment to net income. It's always a source. So we've already taken into account that change. So the only changes we need to take into account are these. So if equipment went from 49,000 to 66, that's 16,000 we know is a use, and that use is an addition to equipment. It's really purchasing more equipment, hence the balance went up. So that's a use of cash. And then the land went down from 72 to 48. That difference, we know is a source because apparently we must have sold it. So it's proceeds from the sale of the property. And that's why it went down. So then when I add these two together, I have cash that's provided by investing activities. And this next slide pretty much just shows you that. So an increase is a use, a decrease is a source. Those were put on the investing section of the statement of cash flow. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next section is preparing the financing activities. And this again is what we have on this summary that if we increase a liability, it's a source. If we decrease a liability, it's a use. So what I would maybe add out to my notes here is first, as it relates to financing, I would keep in mind that financing is the first thing a business ever does when they start out, right? They have to get money to get going. So they finance it. And they either do that through debt financing with these long-term liabilities, or they do it with equity financing by selling stock down here. That's the two options that they have. So in this section, that's what we're evaluating. We're trying to say, uh, do they have an adequate cash balance? If not, they need to borrow money and ultimately pay it back. Or they need to acquire capital and get some sort of return on that capital through a dividend or, or just the appreciation of the stock. So debt or equity financing. So let's first look at the debt financing. So the debt financing, they had a mortgage payable, and that mortgage payable went down 
eight dollars if it went down it must have meant i was paying some of it off down deduction because liabilities same direction so down is a deduction we repaid it it's a use of cash then as it relates to our equity let's talk about this so we're trying to explain this thirty-two thousand dollar change in capital stock and what is that thirty-two thousand dollars ultimately it went from 288 to 320 well the way that did that is they issued additional shares of stock so that thirty-two thousand dollars is up here as proceeds from the issuance of common stock and that should make sense we sold shares we debited cash we credited common stock then i need to explain this change in retained earnings of fifty four thousand and what is that really made up of it is made up of these two things that happen the net income and the dividend payment remember that the net income we've already included that as our starting point at the very top of the statement of cash flow we started with net income so that activity already taken into account and then we have less this dividend payment because we paid out dividends we credited cash we debited dividends so it's a use of cash we paid that dividend so that's up there as a negative we add all these three up and we would get again cash provided by financing activities that's a good thing we've got some cash to help take care of short-term and long-term cash needs so we had our operating our investing and our financing totals and ultimately we have to finish the cash flow so I'm going to say this as I'm just pointing it out so completing the statement of cash flow we started out with net income the cash that was used for operating activities was 16 grand we had cash provided by investing activities of 74.56 and provided by financing of 59.62 so if you add those three together you have a net cash provided by financing sorry a net decrease in cash of 33.08 okay so we used three thousand three hundred and eight dollars of cash so then we take from the balance sheet the beginning cash and the ending cash and those the difference between that should be the same thing here so if cash went down we use 3308 that has to work these came from the comparative balance sheet that is in essence what we've been trying to explain this whole time is how we use three thousand three hundred and eight dollars of cash how it went from ten grand down to sixty seven hundred and the way that it went down that thirty three hundred was through these three things so that finishes the cash flow statement but what good is it to finish it if we don't use it to do analysis so we will use it to do some analysis just know when you look at one of these indirect ones it's considerably harder in real life to do if you're a bigger company with complexity because if you have foreign currency translation amongst companies um, harder accounting transactions other non-cash events it gets a little dicey so let's analyze what one of these is so the intent here is to report and explain the sources and uses so why did our cash go down 3308 the operating cash flow ratio indicates how likely they are to pay off current liabilities and the cash flow margin ratio shows cash flow from operations for every dollar of net sales so the next two slides show these calculations and I'll walk through and tell you that again so first the operating cash flow ratio it's the operating cash flow and we're looking at cash flows from operating activities from the statement of cash flow divided by the current liabilities which is on the balance sheet okay 
and this is similar, I would write this in my notes, similar to the current ratio, which on that previous slide we had said that it's our ability to pay off our current liabilities. And just like the current ratio, we want this to be 1.0 or greater. So write that in your notes. 1.0 or greater is the desired number. And then the cash flow margin ratio is calculated as the cash flows from operating activities, again, from the statement of cash flow, divided by net sales from the income statement. Make sure you know where that information is coming from. And again, whatever number you come up with here is showing you the amount of cash flow you're generating for every dollar of sales that you have in a year. So bigger is better, positive for sure is better. So although we know net income is necessary for long-term success of a business, um, a company still has to be able to pay its bills on time. So it has to be able to generate cash on a timely basis so it can pay its bills, pay its people, pay things. So this number needs to be pretty large in order to show success. So that is a, an indirect method statement of cash flow, both the operating, the investing, and the financing sections of the cash flow. And we're really ultimately just using this to analyze our ability to pay off our bills and our people and things like that. So we'll analyze income statements, we'll analyze balance sheets, statement of equity, but definitely most people, lenders, investors, others, use the statement of cash flow to make sure that we can meet our obligations.